One of Alice A. Bailey's predecessors in the Theosophical Society, in fact one of the co-founders, was Helena Blavatsky, and amongst her books were Isis Unveiled and The Secret Doctrine. From that latter book she says, Lucifer represents life, thought, progress, civilization, liberty, independence. Lucifer is the Logos, the serpent, the saviour. She later said, It is Satan who is the real god of our planet and the only god. She also said, The celestial virgin which thus becomes the mother of God and devils at one and the same time, for she is the ever-loving beneficent deity. But in antiquity and in reality, Lucifer or Luciferius is the name. Lucifer is the divine and terrestrial light, the Holy Ghost and Satan at one and the same time. In it she also confirms that the different names for the mystery gods and goddesses are the same being by different names, saying, Now we have but to remember that Shiva and the Palestinian Baal or Moloch and Saturn are identical. Helena Blavatsky has many followers of her teaching. Some who are known to be fans of her books were Adolf Hitler, Aleister Crowley, Mahatma Gandhi, Elvis Presley and William Butler Yeats. Her dying words were, Keep the link unbroken, do not let my last incarnation be a failure. Her immediate successor was Annie Besant, and then following her came Alice A. Bailey, who in turn became the source of inspiration to Robert Mueller, who in turn became the spiritual figurehead in the United Nations. They've all been links in a chain, and they knew it. So we understand what Robert Mueller means when he boasts that the United Nations is not a man-made creation, but is primarily a spiritual organisation with a spiritual source. No human force will ever be able to destroy the United Nations, for the United Nations is not a mere building or a mere idea. It is not a man-made creation. The United Nations is the vision light of the Absolute Supreme, which is slowly, steadily and unerringly illuminating the ignorance, the night of our human life. The divine success and supreme progress of the United Nations is bound to become a reality. At his choice hour, the Absolute Supreme will ring his own victory bell here on earth through the loving and serving heart of the United Nations. Again, his Absolute Supreme isn't the Christian Absolute Supreme, but is instead the Antichrist. Robert Mueller proudly says here that the United Nations ideal will never be destroyed by any human force because it wasn't created by men, but by Lucifer. Now on this subject, the Bible actually agrees it won't be a human force that brings down the system. It will be Jesus himself who crushes it into nothingness and blows it away like chaff in the wind. And as Daniel 2.44 then says, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed or conquered. It will crush all these kingdoms into nothingness, and it will stand forever. Robert Mueller wrote ominously in Dispatch magazine in June 2001, Do not worry if not all religions will join the United Religions Organization. Many nations did not join the UN at its beginning, but later regretted it and made every effort to join. It was the same with the European community, and it will be the case with the world's religions, because whoever stays out or aloof will sooner or later regret it. It might be just me, but there seems to be a hint of menace in those words. It's as though he's saying, if we don't sway you with the plan A tactics, then be sure that plan B tactics will follow later. If you don't conform, you're going to regret it. You will be a part of the system one way or the other. The Bible also tells us that these tactics will indeed unfortunately work on many Christians. 1 Timothy 4.1 says, Now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last times, some will turn away from the true faith. They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. We are already seeing this happening, and that's one reason why I think it's so important to learn this information, so that we see what the enemy is up to and don't fall into the trap. Alice Bailey confirms that it will be the Babylonian mysteries that unites the religions, saying, Other steps will also be taken in this department of religions and of education, over which the Christ rules, and he will move to restore the ancient spiritual landmarks, to eliminate that which is non-essential, and to reorganize the entire religious field, again in preparation for the restoration of the mysteries. These mysteries, when restored, will unify all faiths. She goes on to explicitly say, The day is dawning when all religions will be regarded as emanating from one great spiritual source. 
all will be seen as unitedly providing the one root out of which the universal world religion will inevitably emerge. Then there will be neither Christian nor heathen, neither Jew nor Gentile, but simply one great body of believers gathered out of all the current religions. They will accept the same truths, not as theological concepts, but as essential to spiritual living. They will stand together on the same platform of brotherhood and of human relations. They will recognize divine sonship and will seek unitedly to cooperate with the divine plan. Such a world religion is no idle dream, but something which is definitely forming today. Robert Muller once more. The world's major religions must speed up dramatically their ecumenical movement and recognize the unity of their objectives in the diversity of their cults. Religions must actively cooperate to bring to unprecedented heights a better understanding of the mysteries of life and of our place in the universe. My religion, right or wrong, and my nation, right or wrong, must be abandoned forever in the planetary age. Robert Muller suggested that religions should unite under the authority of the Pope, saying, We must also hope that the Pope will come before the year 2000 to the United Nations, speak for all the religions and spiritualities on this planet, and give the world the religious view of how the third millennium should be a spiritual millennium, a millennium which will see the integration and harmony of humanity. The Catholic Church, of course, craves the power that would come from having the world under the authority of the Pope. In 1917, in Fatima, Portugal, there was famously an apparition of Mary that appeared to three children, saying, You have seen hell where the souls of poor sinners go. To save them, God wishes to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. Notice she said devotion to her Immaculate Heart, not devotion to God. I think we've heard enough now about the United Nations to know what it's up to, but let's make one last stop before we conclude the UN section. Dag Hammarskjöld was responsible for establishing this meditation room in the middle of the UN. He said, The stone in the middle of the room has more to tell us. We may see it as an altar, empty, not because there is no God, not because it is an altar to an unknown God, but because it is dedicated to the God who man worships under many names and in many forms. He also said, The meditation room faces northeast. To enter the room, one must proceed from darkness to light. As well as having an abstract mural which you may be able to do some symbol hunting on, the room is in the shape of a trapezoid. The middle order of Satanism, set up by Anton LaVey, is called the order of the trapezoid. He refers to an occult principle known as the law of the trapezoid. The trapezoid has long been regarded by occultists as a shape that is especially adapted to enhance demonic manifestation. Kathy Burns wrote, The bottom line of all this is that the consummate architectural form of the Satan worshipper is the trapezoid, and he believes that this shape will create a spiritual cloud chamber of sorts across which he may track the hoof prints of the demons he wishes to invoke. It is believed to be the perfect atmosphere for the manifestation of the unholy and the cursed. You may be thinking I'm introducing something new and confusing here. I haven't used the word trapezoid before. But look at the pagan temple ziggurat again. You will notice that the sides of these constructions create a trapezoid shape. With the ziggurats, the person starts off at the wide end at the bottom and gradually works their way up the narrowing levels towards the temple at the top where the so-called occult illumination is to be found. Similarly, by walking into the UN's meditation room at the wide end and walking towards the narrow end, you are effectively and symbolically approaching the throne of Satan, just as those who ascended the steps of the Tower of Babel would have to have done to gain the audience of Nimrod. To occultists, you are walking from darkness at the lower end to light at the top end. You will therefore notice that the only light in the room comes from the narrow end behind the mural. The occultists don't really care how long it takes to reach their goal. They don't care if their dreams don't materialize in their lifetime. They simply see themselves as cogs of a machine, or like Helena Blavatsky said, links in a chain that will lead to an ultimate end. The Dalai Lama said, The United Nations becomes for us the answer to world suffering, world darkness and world ignorance. The inner vision of the United Nations is the gift supreme. This vision the world can deny for 10, 20, 30, 40, 100 years. 
In other words, we can resist for as long as we like, but it will not stop until it realizes its aim. It may take 10 years, it may take 100 years. The United Nations will keep working towards our enslavement and the establishment of a new world order where the Antichrist can return.